So just to uh, carry on a little bit further with the EP levelling system, I said there's two ways that you can actually operate the leveller. You can operate it either off the remote control, which is this device here, has exactly the same functions as what we do on the control panel that's just, uh, just inside the door on the bed frame. Uh, this is your on off button. Uh, that's for either lowering the legs or raising the legs. If you press that button, you're manually going to adjust the legs yourself. Uh, and that's the reason why you've then you've got four different directions there. Uh, but that's just quickly on the, on the EP levelling system. Uh, very simple system, personally just leave it on automatic, does it by itself, once they're down, it turns itself off after 30 seconds. Uh, so that's the EP. Uh, I'm now going to come on to uh, working the rest of the, this particular caravan that we're in at the moment, which is a Coachman Laser 850 2020 model, 2020 model. And uh, it's the X, XL version, which is the wider version. It's an eight foot wide vehicle. So that's the only things you need to know about what I'm demonstrating at the moment. We haven't actually set this system live. So uh, as I'm demonstrating the vehicle today, there are things that you'll, you'll be seeing just as I am setting it up as you would on site. First area I'm gonna to come to on this particular time is straight to the control panel on 12 volts. This is the on off button. Uh, I've made it come live and as you can see it said master on. I've then got various bits here for distribution of 12 volts within my caravan. This is for internal lights and hey presto lights are already on which is quite nice but there are many lights within this caravan and I will demonstrate where the switches are for those as we go through and then this is the awning light on the outside of the caravan uh, and it says on the window there awning light on and it is, and you might see a change of color there on the door frame as the awning light comes on and off, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so you can see the awning light is uh, functioning. That's one way to operate it. There are another way that you can be done, which is on the key fobs. Uh, I'm just remembering which one it is. So forgive me for remembering. There we go. So you hear that little beep there and the awning light on. Da, 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 da. Right, okay, I did that wrong. I'm gonna do it, it's the, I believe, the bottom right-hand segment of this round circle. It's got a little bit of knurling on it. I think it's that that does the awning light. There we go, yes. That's the awning light operation on the key fobs. So forgive me for not remembering. It's been a few weeks, 10 weeks at least, since I've actually <laughs> demonstrated one of these, so I've uh, forgotten what it was. Right, the other two buttons at the top is for arm and disarm. So there's, it's like a lock mechanism one's closed and one's open uh, so this is to arm the alarm and that is to disarm the alarm so when I arm it two beeps it gives off two audible beeps when it's armed and it also puts the awning light on for 30 seconds you might see the awning light still on all right so that's what it will do when I disarm it three beeps all right so two beats for arm three beats for disarm and the bottom left-hand window down here, which has got a clear section section on it, is if you're going to arm the alarm, but deactivate the PIR, the passive infrared detector. So if you had an animal inside the caravan, you could actually uh, emit the PIR side of it. And that will then give you just the one beep, I think. There's the one beep. Mm -hmm. I've now armed it, but I've actually deactivated any recognition of movement with inside the caravan. So if you do leave an animal in here, something like that, uh, then uh, it won't activate falsely on the alarm. To deactivate that, again, is just the top right-hand corner. One, two, three beeps, there it is all off. That is the alarm system demonstrated. Okay, so, I'm gonna come through to some of the appliances. And uh, as I say, you're gonna have to forgive me because none of this is actually set up. We have put the services on, i.e. we've got the gas supply on. We have got the water connected, but not, for, not through the system. We have got gas on, but I haven't, blown got all the air out of the system yet and we have got mains electrics on so i am going to come to those items let's do the main side of it first we're coming down to the con uh, consumer unit which is located on the off side front bed box okay so it, the panels split into two this is all 12 volts those are all 12 volt fuses and on this front edge it tells you what those fuses are representing and what they actually uh, serve and immediately above, you can also see in the same shot, 
that we have got numbers up there which are the numbers corresponding to the fuse. So if it's a 5 here, it's a 5 amp fuse. If it's a 10 up there, it's a 10 amp fuse, etc, etc. These are 20s and we've got 115 available. So most of it is 5, 10, 15, 20, with the exception of this one, which is a 7.5 amp fuse. It's for igniters. It's quite an unusual size, but uh, they're just standard car blade fuse uh, fuses. Uh, you can get them at Halfords or at any good caravan accessory shop, Broad Lane being one. <laughs> That's 12 volts. Above it is a series of MCBs. That's three of them. That's those three there. And then the right hand one, which has got an addition of this little blue switch here. Uh, that is called an RCD, as indicated down there. They're RCDs. These are MCBs. RCD, residual circuit device. It means that if somebody was using mains electrics and it was live, and something happens to that supply, it should automatically trip out, which is what it's just done now. I've just tripped the main supply out. You should do this initially when you first couple up to mains electrics on site. You should actually test to make sure that you are going to be safe. And the way to test it is say, press the blue button in, it trips out. If it does that, you've got supply and you are safe. Turn it back on again. The MCBs, they're like fuses, but these just trip out take off the offending appliance which has caused it to fuse and reset the trip and away you go. You should be up and running again. Hopefully that explains what MCBs and RCD does. All right, so that's earth leakage, they're fuses. And that's your consumer unit that you have on Coachman's. Uh, you may hear a little bit of background hum at the moment, which is uh, being generated by the charger, which is located behind this panel here. It's not something that we ask end users to get involved with, but the battery charger working from mains electrics is located there. Uh, it's just so you know where it is, should you be asked to ever look at it. That's what's behind that panel there. Okay, so uh, while I'm in this bed area here, uh, there are a couple of things that I do want to point out, but it is quite complicated underneath here and quite comprehensive with all the different bits of equipment. So this is your combi boiler, your uh, water heater stroke central heating system. Uh, combi being, obviously it's doing both sides of the system. That's what you've got here. This red item here is connected to your boiler and it's what I call a preheat. Uh, it is heating water before it gets into your hot water tank. Um, the claim by the manufacturers Audi is that once you've heated the water up to temperature you could have constant hot water continuously because the preheaters are heating it before it gets into that uh, into that hot water tank that's in, in the boiler itself and you can sustain a shower constantly until you run out of water so that's what uh, the preheater is uh, that's quite new on the marketplace not many manufacturers are fitting it at the moment but coachmen are doing it in their top model range this bit here is to do with the power touch movers. It's the brains of the mover itself. It's what allow, it tells the motors to uh, go in which particular direction. Because it's a twin axle caravan we're in, we've got two uh, relay boards. Uh, if it was a single axle caravan, you'd only have one, but that's a twin unit here and that's what the brains is that makes that work. That's your battery box. That's where your mains coupling takes place. Down below it here, we have got two coaxial connections which are for outside source. Uh, on some sites that you go to, you can couple into their external uh, coaxial points because you could be in a poor reception area and your aerial on the caravan might not be sufficient to be able to bring you uh, a, a decent uh, television reception. So you can couple up sometimes onto site uh, coaxials and one of these is a coax and the other one is for satellite connection if you are on a uh, you've got your own dish and, and digibox and you want to uh, have digital reception, then that's where you do your uh, your outside connections for that. Then, so the only thing I want to briefly point out now in this bed area is uh, a bank of fuses here. You don't need to know too much about those, uh, but I just want to point them out there. Behind this clear Perspex window here, there's four fuses there, and there's a bank of fuses just down the front bed box there. I'm mainly pointing them out so you know where they are. Uh, they don't. I'm not going to go into them as to what they all do because I could be here uh, probably three hours and you'd probably fall asleep. Certainly after three hours, I would have fallen asleep. But they're there. <laughs> but they are there and that's what they're for. This is to do with the emergency release of the EP levelling system. Should it ever fail, we can actually press this uh, button here um, for, for it to uh, 
to deactivate itself. And this bit here is for programming of the EP system. It's not something I want end users to be pressing, uh, but I do want them to be aware of it because I don't want you to start pressing it. Um, so please don't press that button there. It's to do with the EP leveling system and it's purely for engineers really. So the only point now I need to show you on a boiler system here, coachmen always have two drain down, down taps. They have one on the hot system, which is that yellow valve down there on the floor. And we also got one, which is very, a bit more difficult to see. It's uh, down here, just where my finger is here. You can't really see it yet. Yeah. Okay, mm, that's better. It's that there. So when it's raised, it's open and dropping water outside. When it's down flat, it's uh, closed and would be serving the caravan system. And that is on the cold, cold pipe, be blue being cold and the red being the hot side. And the last thing I need to demonstrate just in here is the gas manifold taps down here. So we've got a supply coming in, going through the tap and then to the outlets going out. Uh, this one here has got a snowflake on the, on the tap, which means it's for the refrigerator. A quarter of a turn turns it off, a quarter of a turn turns it back on and it doesn't matter which direction I go in. It's either on or off. If it's in that direction, it's on. If it's across the pipe like so, it's off. And that's just demonstrated there on the uh, on the little window there, label down there for you. Okay, right, so going further forward from underneath the offside bed box, we're gonna come back to the panel above the door. Um, as I say, I'll try and demonstrate everything that I can within a reasonable time scale. So, turn the internal lights on, which we have now got live, as you can see. Uh, and around the caravan, you're gonna find various light switches located. So the top rocker switch here is purely for the down lighter in this area here. Uh, the area here is for TV. So we, this is a TV bracket and we've got also on the side here, a double mains point. We've also got a 12 volt socket and we've got a coax and also an F connector, like a satellite connector. And that's what we're actually operating here. Uh, so this is one position for a TV to go. There's a second position for a television, which has got exactly the same here as what we see uh, available in the bedroom, because this has got a rear fixed double bed and you're gonna find that replicated exactly in the back end of the caravan as you see there. So that's those. Let's come to your spotlights. Uh, there's four of them in the front end of the caravan and they're touch sensitive. All I'm doing is just touching uh, that little round dot there and it comes live. That gives you a little background light. So if you get tucked short in the middle of the night, you need to put a little light on for illumination to go to the bathroom. That's that one there. But the next one is for full illumination of uh, the LED light. It rotates so you can bring that to wherever you need it to be. And it's an LED light. It's very powerful, um, but it doesn't get hot and it's very energy efficient. So that's what happens. The next time I press it, it goes off altogether. So that's the same on all of these lights. I'm gonna do it just very quickly, just so you can see them working. And it's double check for me that I know everything is working then within the caravan. If I go around and do this process, that's those. Right, so they're the spotlights. Uh, coming into the kitchen work surface very, very quickly. And we've got another touch sensitive light, which is on the underside of the wall locker. And it's just this area here. I just need to bring my finger over that area there. And we've got quite a nice strip light here of LED lights, which is then just illuminating the work surface area up. If I want to turn that one off, it's... <laughs> I did say touch sensitive, so it depends on which finger. <laughs> because you've got gloves there on. There we, we go. go. So it goes off again. So happy on that bit. Right, going further forward. And I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask my colleague just to uh, move oh, slightly. <laughs> um, I'm just going to lower this bed frame down because I just want to show you a couple of things. We've got a bank of switches there on the right-hand side, and we've got four switches down here on the left-hand side, on the near side of the caravan. So there's a bank of four there, and a bank of two on the off side. So let's do the two on the off side. Uh, one of them's gonna be for floor light, which is this one here. So the first one on the inner edge, or the outer edge, if you want to call it, is for the floor light at, at, in the kitchen area. Again, for illumination, just in case you need to go take that trip to the bathroom. Uh, the one on the on the inside of it is to do, and it's quite unusual, uh, lights that come underneath the bed frames. Uh, Coachman again of the only manufacturers I believe that are actually offering that on their on their products. Just the lights again illuminates the floor well area. So the four on this side 
we're going to find, as I go through it. <laughs> Which one's, uh, there we that go. That does the overhead locker lights on the near side. Not doing the offside, it's just doing the near side. That's above the refrigerator, as you can see. And also then continuing through here. Doesn't do the curved section there. We, we, bulk headlights, we're calling them slightly different. So that's the first one, that's the inner one. The next one does the overhead locker lights on the offside. That's in the kitchen area, coming across into the first front locker. So that's those lights. The next one will operate the corners. So that's the bulkhead corner lights I'm referring to. Yeah. And the last one uh, should do the palmit lights. All right, so that's illumination of all these palmit lights going all the way around. So that's the outer one, closest to the outside wall. The next one did, as I say, uh, the bulkheads and the down lighters in this uh, area here. The next one does, as you say, uh, the overhead locker lights offside, overhead locker lights near side. That's all your lighting in the front end of the caravan. Uh, we do go further back and I will demonstrate where some of the other uh, light switches are as we go uh, into the back end of the vehicle. But while I'm in this area, I'll try and just do everything I can in this area first, in the lounge area. Let's do the fly screens and blinds. The window mechanism is quite straightforward. I can't turn that lever latch. I've got to press the button in in the middle to be able to rotate it. If I don't press the button in, it won't rotate. It's only on the bottom latches. Don't have to worry about uh, the window stays themselves. So, to get some ventilation, but in a fairly secure position is that. Uh, that's the first location. The next location after that is obviously to have the window ajar and to just tighten up the thumb screws at the top, just to locate the, lock the window stays out, which is that one there now. And uh, obviously when I want to release it or have it in a different location, just slacken those off slightly. You could have it fully open if you want or in a different, in a different position. And that's as straightforward as the window needs to be. Nothing different on any of the windows. They operate all in the same way. And every window has a, a, a night blind and also a fly screen. Um, what I want you to point out to you very quickly is something that's on this particular window. It's on every window actually, not just on this one. Uh, and that's if we are doing long-term storage and there's any chance of really strong sunlight, uh, I need you to remember to have uh, a ventilation point above the blind. What I'm referring to, this needs to vent. If we don't allow heat to disperse from this area because this is a silver back blind what happens is the sun uh, is obviously outside generating its sunlight but it puts heat onto the blind and that heat then gets radiated against the plastic so if this was completely sealed with no ventilation whatsoever that uh, heat being generated is going onto the perspex screen and if it goes onto the perspex and distorts i'm afraid it isn't covered under warranty just be aware of it. I want you to be uh, aware that if you are in storage, that's what the position it needs to be. And if you look on the window frames themselves, you will find there's a symbol just up here by the thumb screw. It's a round symbol with a book inside it, which means please read your owner's handbook. Because in the owner's handbook, you will find a section that says uh, about that under being covered or not. Okay. So your panoramic window um, is a fixed window. Uh, this applies exactly the same rules if you're leaving it in long-term storage to allow for a small amount of ventilation to take place. It's not ventilation, it's just heat to disperse from this area because it's a fixed window. When you pull that down, that's fully down like that and sealed, that's fine. Fine for evening use. Please use these blinds for evening use. I'm only talking long-term storage. And this is a lot tighter pleat than what it used to be. There used to be quite large pleats in some of the blinds. Uh, I don't know if these are small pleats as well now. Yes, these are all small pleats. But the pleating that you had on the blind were quite large before and they, they used to lose their memory and they used to drop out. But this one's actually quite a tight one. So this one now, we've learned over many years of uh, producing caravans that that should work as it is. And our overhead roof vent here uh, travels, the, the arm travels in a track. So that's fully open. And when it's fully open, we have a fly screen that can come across and stop the flies from coming in. Or we could have a night blind, which is that there. They're not spring loaded, they're just pleated and you just push them to where they need to be. And then as you operate the arm in the track, it goes into the position there. I call it a third, well, first position I'll call that. 
Uh, it allows about six inches of roof vent to be open. So it's quite a good ventilation. Uh, and that's what you've got there. But if I come again and lift it, I can go into that point there. And that is roughly about an inch open uh, off the roof. Obviously probably more for a nighttime ventilation. And then if I do it like this, push that latch, that, that arm past that little button there, it, that's the travel position. So when I want to use it, push the button in, bring it down and there it goes, it's straight through. You shouldn't be able to get that wrong. Try to simplify where we can. <laughs> okay, so windows covered, blinds are covered. Bed. Roof fence covered. Uh, my colleague's asking me to demonstrate the bed. Uh, <laughs> I need the slats. You'll be very pleased to hear I don't give a full demonstration. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, here we go. So, I'm not, I'm not operating that, that's just a shoe cover type thing. What I'm doing is grabbing the next handle above it, it's a proper handle, and you pull the slats all the way on the front bed, all the way to the end here, and the board just comes over this nylon bush on either track, either side. So it goes over the top and then into that position there, and that's locked in position. It stops the slats from being pushed back, so if you, if you put your body weight here, for instance, that isn't going to move. You then would bring the backrests, i.e. that cushion there, which I'll quickly go and get. For sleeping arrangement, I highly recommend it that you sleep on the reverse side of the cushion. Uh, the reasons being for that is that you don't get all the undulations that you see here. This knee roll here is a lot thicker in its part of the construction than what it is just here on this backrest. So you want to sleep as much on that side or on that part of the density of the foam. So that cushion, you would actually turn over and roll over to the outside edge. So the knee roll is on the outside edge and not gonna be well demonstrated. Here we go. That's it. So you're doing something similar to that. You're now sleeping on the reverse side of the cushions and you are getting a flatter surface it's a lot more comfortable uh, on, on a bed situation when you're using it as a double bed. So that's how the, the front bed would be. On this particular model, we have got a fixed bed at the back end, so you'd be very pleased to hear I haven't got to demonstrate that one. <laughs> but you can obviously see that when I take the cushions off, this uh, strut and bed frame lifts up all the time. It needs the cushion on it to keep it in a downward position. If that wasn't there, it would always spring back up. That's your slats back, that's your backrest back, your armrest into the corner, and your cushions coming across. Scatch cushions, right. Bum, 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 bum. So, happy on that bit. You do have an occasional table which just pulls her forward and then drops back like so against the bulkhead. It does have a slight step in it. I'm afraid uh, we're not able to get it that that surface and this surface can actually marry up as one. Uh, I do apologize, but that is the way it has to be because this mechanism that I'm trying to do now, which is pull it forward to retract it back. If they made this so it did actually finish flush, I would never get it to travel back. You can see there's a gap there. That's the gap. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we are unable to engineer, to engineer it any other way. That is your occasional table, and that is how it's meant to be. And located in this drawer is everything. Uh, additional equipment, uh, paperwork. But if I can quickly get to it, the only ones I want you to read, if I can find them. If I can find them. And that's if they're in here not in here right what I was looking for is the owner's handbook um, anything that I'm covering today I'm only glancing over very quickly but uh, it does go into greater detail in the owner's handbook it will be provided in the caravan when this is actually uh, supplied to the customer it's just that I haven't got them available in this pack at the moment so I apologize on that they're normally on coachman two white pack uh, two white books a5 booklets something similar to that uh, which will have the coachman emblem on it one is the warranty service book and the other one will be the owner's handbook for the demonstration of what I'm trying to do now for you. Okay, 
So the little uh, item on the front edge down there at floor level, that is your passive infrared. That what That is what will detect movement inside the caravan. So if somebody was to break in through a door or a window and actually move inside the caravan with the alarm live, it would automatically uh, detect that movement. Uh, passive infrared detects that movement and then would activate. Uh, the only other thing I need to point out, it's nothing too much to be able to tell you down here. This is one of the uh, smart chargers that is now on the marketplace for charging iPhones and things like that. Some of the Samsungs are all that way and you can just put your phone on there and it automatically charges rather than having to go via USBs. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I also believe that the Samsung uh, product also and Huawei are compatible with that particular product. Uh, but uh, it's something to see for me, I'm afraid. Uh, right, so coming into the caravan a bit further now, let's talk about mains and main supply. We've got a double outlet in the kitchen area. So we've got two 13, uh, 13 amp plugs there. And uh, we've got a double one over into the television area, should you need it for the television use. Uh, I'm just going to go up into the front offside corner. There's one up in the front offside corner down there as well. So. In this area, it's quite well uh, provided for main supply. There's five of them in total in this area. Also, just on the television area, we have got USBs available. So if your phone isn't one of the smarts, like mine uh, at the moment, uh, <laughs> I have got USBs uh, provided here as well for charging purposes. Right, so front end covered as such. I now want to go through some of the equipment, i.e. the operation of the water system, getting that all filled the cooking facility, the microwave, the refrigerator. So I'm just going to go through those very quickly now. So I'm going to turn on my tap. My tap symbol is that one there. Press it in. It says pump on on the panel. It says pump running. Uh, let's just go past that one for a minute. Right, I'm going to come back now to the tap itself. Uh, I'm going to position it, uh, put, the, put the faucet over the uh, actual basin. Don't have it like this, because otherwise you end up with water like I did uh, here earlier and you then bring the, the tap to its cold position, which is that. Open the tap up, no, sorry, that's the hot position. That's the cold position, I do apologize, got it the wrong way around. That's cold, and get running water through the cold side first. Please don't worry about these little dribbles. Uh, I will explain about those in a moment. So that's cold water. Once we've got a supply of cold water, we bring it through into the hot position. And what that would should do, is now fill up the onboard water tank. I'm on about in the boiler, the hot water tank in the boiler. So it's now pumping water inside the uh, combi boiler located in the front corner, uh, that silver black box, and it holds approximately two gallons of water, 10 litres approximately of hot water. Um, once we've got that flow, as we have now, uh, we can actually, uh... Sorry, I'm listening for the pump, I can hear a pump running. Can I stop? Mm -hmm. Go. So nice steady flow and we can turn the tap off and the pump will build up pressure and then shut itself off which it has done I've heard it already do that so I know that's working fine so let me just bring you back to the faucet itself and I was saying a little bit about these uh, additional dribbles that's coming out through the tap this is only rubberized I can't necessarily do it here there you go it's a little filter it's just a removable item that uh, periodically needs to be cleaned so be aware of it uh, it's just one of those things it's just got a little rib section there that should hopefully seal it i'm not going to say it's going to seal but Better. not, not dripping as much but it will it will just slightly leak it's just there be aware of it. it's a filter that's all okay so once i've got filled the system up i can now introduce a heat source and uh, on coach moments we are just coming to the audi panel uh, immediately above the door here this is the on off switch i'm going to turn it on and the boiler is now live it's a compact 3020 boiler it's made in sweden by a company called albi and the standby menu is this one here briefly it's saying that the internal temperature is 26 degrees getting warm <laughs> uh, and i also have mains electrics available um, so i'm going to do this very quickly i'm now going to press the menu button because you do need to set it up so let's press the menu the room thermostat is only set at five degrees. If I want to increase the, that, I press the plus button until I get it to the desired temperature. I can keep my finger on it and it will go all the way up to where it is. Remember it was 26 degrees internally. So let's just stick it on 30 for now. Fantastic. 
great. <laughs> My colleague's going to love that. <laughs> uh, so that's on 30 degrees. If I want to lower that temperature down, I can use the minus button. Uh, so it's here, come on, it's, it has to be touch sensitive. We there we go, and down? it's going down. I've now selected 27 just for her. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and that's all that we need to worry about room temperature. So if you do want to increase the room temperature, because it's feeling a little bit chilly or whatever, by all means operate it here. The maximum setting you can have is 30 degrees. The minimum setting is five degrees. Uh, when it's not in use in the summer, i.e. the central heating, then you have it lowered down on the five degree setting. Right, so the next symbol down, it has a shower head and gets a bit confusing. What I want you to take notice of is the triangle. At the moment, that triangle is half dark and half clear. If I press the minus button, it's completely clear. If I press the plus button, it's now completely blacked out. All right, so what's it mean? When it's half and half, we're asking all of the boiler operation to function. I am referring to uh, hot water and central heating. If it's completely clear, I am just doing central heating. I'm gonna explain, I know that. Uh, and if it's completely dark, i.e. like that, it is just doing the water system. How do I know that? Just as a quick reminder, if you press menu again, I'm looking to see if I get a third symbol up here. And at the moment, I haven't got it. Ignore this one, flashing. That's the preheater. But I haven't got a symbol up there, so I know I haven't got a circulation. If I just go back, let that go half and half, go back again, there's my circulation. So I now know I've got central heating working. Uh, and at the moment, I say it's heating hot water and circulating uh, for the central heating. If I just have it in that position, completely clear. I've still got that symbol there, but my preheater has now gone off. So it's telling me I'm not heating water. Does that make sense? I hope. So triangle clear, central heating only. Half and half hot water and central heating. If I don't want the central heating working, lower the thermostat down. Right, the symbol below it is zigzags and to do with mains electrics, that's obviously what that is, an electric sign symbol. Um, and I don't want it working at two kilowatt. There's one kilowatt and there's off. So let's just put it on one kilowatt because uh, at the moment my electrics can't stand more than uh, the one kilowatt of use on it. Uh, but I'm also going to ask gas to support the mains. So I am asking it to work off mains, but I'm going to ask gas to work with it because it will heat the boiler up a lot quicker. And for demonstration purposes, we'd like to show you the hot water working. So that's what we've got now. Mains electrics working on one kilowatt and gas supporting it. The maximum you can have on kilowattage is three. So we've got a, a two position and number one, and three. Uh, and basically that depends on the ampage available on the sites that you go to. So the boiler's up and running and working. We fill the system up and that can just work by itself. It's going to be about half an hour for that boiler to actually heat up to temperature. Uh, it, this is the standby menu. There's the circulation. I am actually going to take out the central heating part of it. I'm going to load the thermostat down because my colleague and myself are boy, definitely <laughs> cooking in here. Whew, at least you know it works. So I am going to take the central heating out for a moment. So I'm taking it all the way down to five, five degrees. That's the symbol disappeared. And it says it's 27 in here. So let's, open this. let's get this back <laughs> open again. Okay, so we've got a bit of air circulating around. Right, half an hour or less than that. We'll come back to this tap and we'll just see if we've got hot water. Let's come to the cooking facility. Please note the symbol on the, on the uh, glass lid. Uh, it's a, there's a gas match with a gas flame uh, and with a, a cross through it, which is saying a warning symbol. It's in reference to heat retained within this area. If any of these have been in use for a long period of time, there's obviously going to be residual heat here. So it's saying, please allow uh, the heat to disperse from this area before you lower the lid back down. This is toughened glass. Toughened glass does shatter. You don't want to have that experience. Believe me, I've only ever had it one in 44 years but uh, it wasn't a nice experience. It, uh, I did happen to have my back to it, so I didn't have any of the glass shattering my way. But when it goes, it goes. So be aware, if these have been on, do allow heat to disperse from the air before you lower that lid down. This valve here is gonna be for the electric hob at the back. And I can go directly to one, or I could go directly to six. Uh, what I was looking for is to see if there's any indicator lights, and there is no indicator light, so I'm just Oh yeah, okay, oh. it's there already. Uh, I'm not gonna mount the gloves, uh, but it is on. Take it from me that it does work. So you can go directly 
uh, round that way, or you could come back the other way and go directly to six, the hotter heat if you wish to. These valves are then gonna be for this ring here, this one. This one's gonna be for the grill. This one's gonna be for the oven. This one's gonna be for the small front gas ring. And that one's gonna be for the one at the rear. So you've got two medium sized rings, one small ring, and then an electric ring. I'm only gonna operate one because if I can get gas through here operating, you can see it's obviously working. And that's high and that's low. Low's gone off. Let's put it on high again. Keep it depressed for a few seconds. Ah, giving me trouble, so I accept the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see where we're going. That's on, and there's the low simmer. Hopefully that's uh, showing up on the mm -hmm. camera all right. And there's high again and off. You just need to leave the valves pressed in for a few seconds. So since this one did give me trouble, I will do these two just to make sure they're both ignited, they're both on high. I've released the valves after a few seconds and they're both on low. So I know those are both operating fine. You grill, turn it to the full flame, press the valve in, keep it depressed, press the igniter, away she goes. And if I remove the grill pan, you can hopefully see uh, the flame just up there. Yep. yep. And that's on a high setting. So the low setting's down there. It is on, I can see it's on. I can see the flame there, look, there's low, there's high, and there is off. And that's all that you need to know about the grill. The grill pan itself has got a handle which comes in on the backside edge, on the long edge here, not on the small edge, but on the long edge. It comes on a 45 degree angle and holds in position like so. And then to release it, it's that. And it makes it easier for cleaning in the, in the washing up bowl. If you look inside the grill, you'll see there's uh, two runners on either side, which means you can have the grill pan in the lower position, or you can have it in a higher position, closer to the grill, uh, which will obviously cook the toast better. Or if you don't want to burn your bacon, let's have it down on the lower setting. All right, so grill pan and handle just there. And that's in that one. Your oven, the oven door lowers downwards, doesn't pull this way, it lowers down. And we've gone back to actually having the flame on display on this particular model. So I'm going to press the valve in, strike the igniter. Right, hopefully you can see the flame through the, uh, through the two holes at the back. Mm -hmm. That's on. Keep it pressed in for a few more seconds of release. And you need to then close the oven door for heat to build up into the oven for it to regulate itself on the thermostat here on the, on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. Uh, and when I say regular six, it's approximately 200 degrees Fahrenheit on, on the uh, cooker control here for regular six. This is equivalent to a domestic oven. So uh, if you're used to temperatures, that's what we need to be uh, operating at. And that's the off position there. Mm -hmm. Coachman provides you with two oven shelves, which is quite nice. Uh, a lot of manufacturers, they ask you to purchase a second oven shelf, but Coachman provides you two all the way throughout. The only other thing I need you to be aware of, if there's any failure of this particular item, I'm going to ask you to photograph a little silver label on the left hand side. It's called the data plate, which is this plate here. It's got all the information on that I need, should anything go wrong with this particular cooker in a warranty period, which is three years. We need that data plate information to be able to process a warranty claim. So that's the oven up and running, as you can see. And because I've just found another light and another light switch, I might as well show you where this one is. This <laughs> one's just located on the side of the uh, unit here. And obviously it's just under locker light in the, uh, in the drawer unit for illumination when the drawer's open. Okay, so over onto the Dometic fridge, uh, one of the Monday refrigerators, uh, quite unique in what this Dometic fridge does. We can actually open the door on one side or close it on that side. And now we can open it on that side. So uh, a little bit different on uh, how this all operates. As you can see, you just have to make sure that you have pressed it home firmly. Otherwise, if you've got it in the in, in a middle position, you probably won't get it to release on the other side. But let's come down to the operation. So I'm gonna press the button until I've got some, uh, some detail here showing. I'm gonna press it again. And I've now uh, only got the thermostat, so hopefully says there, there's the thermostat, I should be able to increase it. That's increasing, I'm scrolling the button down to increase or decrease the uh, thermostat. When I've got it in the desired point, I press to confirm it, there it is there. Um, I now want to press it again. I want to go not into the thermostat, I want to come into the uh, 
into that one. So there we are now, I've illuminated that part. I'm gonna press it again to go into that system. And that allows me to either have it on auto set, I could have it on a manual battery, I could have it on a manual gas or a manual mains, or a return to go back to what it was and it's automatic. At the moment it's on automatic, but if I wanted to do it on a manual, press it to confirm it, it's now changed. If I wanted to go to gas, press it to confirm it, it's now changed. Come out of that menu, there's the return key. It's now going to try and operate off gas on manual. We haven't got the auto showing. If I want to go back into that, press it once. Uh, I've done that wrong, <laughs> says he. Uh, so run back out. There it is there. I should press that again. All right, let's go down again. Press. There, I've illuminated the gas. Press it again. There's the symbols. If I leave it on automatic there and confirm it, this refrigerator will automatically try to work off mains electrics first. It prefers to work off mains if it's available, and if it is, it will work off mains first, then it will go to gas, and if that's not available, it says you're going to work off 12 volt battery, which is the position it should be for transit. I've left it on the auto point. I'm gonna press the return, and now the panel says auto. There's main symbol, working at full, full, uh, full temperature set. Uh, we have got other menus below it, which is uh, items to which you can in, uh, have on. It's to be able to uh, illuminate the panel slightly greater or internal lights in here. There's a fan system which we can ask to uh, help circulate the heat at the back of the refrigerator. That's mainly applicable if you're uh, on the continent. Uh, I warmer temperatures, you need the assistance of the fan to cool the refrigerator down and that's all on the lower screen. So I'm just concentrating on the basics at this stage. If you do want to have further information, please consult with either the owner's handbook or the Dometic actual owner's handbook itself. But that's the refrigerator now working on auto, on mains electrics and up and running. And you can see the little light illuminating in the fridge only. It hasn't got a light circuit in the freezer box on the top. All right, so that's the refrigerator covered. The microwave, uh, quite a nice one. It's made by Russell Hobbs, got like a mirrored front. So obviously you, have, you might see my reflection, <laughs> ugly as it may be. Uh, we can set a power level, which is by the, by the way of pressing that button there. I'm not going to do it. Uh, we can set a clock uh, and we can do it this way as well. Their power levels there, for instance, uh, which I'm gonna clear. Okay, and I can come the other way, which is a timer. That's 95 minutes. If I want the time to work for 95 minutes or 90, it's going down increases of five minutes. When I start getting below a certain level, it will all of a sudden come to minutes itself. Here we go. Let's go nine, oh, 30 seconds then, sorry. Nine, th nine o'clock, nine minutes, eight minutes, 30, <laughs> eight minutes, seven minutes, 30, etc., etc. And when I get down to a lower level again, all of a sudden I'm going down in tens on seconds. So depending on how accurate you want it to be, that's how you can do it by just scrolling it on the timer. I'm going to clear that timer again. The way of doing it is just start. It's put 30 seconds in. I'm going to clear that. There's 27 seconds still left and cleared again by pressing it. If I go up again and press that now twice, I'll have a minute shown on the clock. Once, twice, there was a minute. I'm now clearing it. So you can do it by 30 seconds increments if you wish to, or you could just uh, do it by a timer on the scrolling it to the left. Changing of the power level, yes, you can press that, or you can rotate it right and it changes the power level. So, many little things on there, but it's straightforward. Uh, it even has a clock, if you want to put a clock on there. Personally, I never do, but uh, it is down to the individual. So, the last thing to demonstrate, I think, in this particular area is the Omnivent. Uh, the Omnivent must be in an open position if you are going to ask the fan to work. Uh, so slightly raised, not fully raised necessarily. And as I press the on off button, the center button, it will always go into an extraction first. You're gonna find a very small illumination light come on there and the fan starts to operate and it's in an outward direction. So it's in, uh, it's extracting air. At the moment that's on half a speed. That's become brighter. That's now one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. Obviously it gets very loud and away that goes. If I want to change it or slow it down, let's press the opposite button for bringing air in, circulation of air coming into the vehicle. I've slowed it right down to a half speed. That's it slowed down altogether, but still live. 
and now I'm going to ask it to go in the opposite direction. There's a half speed, and again, we've got the same functionality as we had on the extraction. Okay, uh, that is now bringing nice fresh air coming in. I'm going to stand underneath it for a while because <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> okay, if I, when I stop it, it will stop obviously circulating, and the next time I turn it on, it will go to extraction. All right, so it's going to extract. But just be aware of what it does. It's quite a nice little feature. It does have a night vent on it. So if you want to actually close uh, any night moonlight off, then you bring it in across that position there and release. So I'm releasing these two little catches here, squeeze them together, it goes all the way back. So whilst going through uh, various lockers within the vehicle, I've now discovered the owner's handbook and also the warranty service book. The warranty service book is something that it gets filled in as it already looks like being filled in. We can't show the details because obviously that's customer confidentiality, mm -hmm. uh, but that one's already been pre-filled in for this particular owner where you can take fashion of it. All right, uh, we're gonna go through now into the bathroom, toilet compartment. Uh, we're gonna get, discover some of the features that we've got uh, in the uh, rear of the vehicle. I suggest my colleague just stands in the uh, shower cubicle. <laughs> uh, you. Know, if you want to go in the shower cubicle, well, we'll just that. Fruit heart. <laughs> <laughs> Who did that sound like? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's move on <laughs> quickly. So, uh, in the wardrobe area, uh, we've got a couple of things. First off, it's a touch sensitive light. As that door closes, it makes contact with that particular light switch and just illuminates the wardrobe up. In the wardrobe, you are going to find we have got the Audi reservoir tank. Uh, and at the moment, there's two things which are new in here. First off, it's pink in colour, the fluid. And that fluid is a five year solution. Doesn't really need to be changed uh, up until it's five years of age. But on service work, we'll always test the quality of that antifreeze to make sure that it has still got uh, sufficient, uh, obviously, uh, properties in there to be able to work correctly for you when it's in use. At the moment, it's in a slightly higher position than what it would normally be uh, when it's cold. The normal resting point is just the top of my finger, roughly just the top of the nail would be about there. About a quarter inch lower uh, than what it is right now. It's just that we have got the heating system been circulating and it has slightly expanded. But uh, the resting when it's cold wants to be about a quarter of an inch lower than what it is right now. It's got a little turnbuckle, no not turnbuckle, it's got a cap that you remove on the top and it allows you to pour antifreeze into the into the reservoir tank so periodically it does need topping up do use the antifreeze uh, audi antifreeze if you can it needs to be just g13 compatible product a g13 compatible product means that it's for your aluminium use you can buy that at halfords but i do recommend you go to a caravan store and buy the proper audi fluid uh, the Audi fluid will be the same pink solution and it's ready to use, it's already diluted. You just pour the, the necessary amount into your reservoir. As in use, it does evaporate. So do be aware, it is a product that will actually uh, lower itself in that reservoir tank. So you do need to maintain it from time to time. Uh, it's not just on annual servicing that you might need to do that. You just need to make sure that periodically it is topped up. So to show you the Thetford toilet, uh, this is a straightforward toilet. It's a swivel bowl mechanism, so you can rotate that to give you a little bit more knee room away from the vanity basin if necessary. Uh, you'll be very pleased to hear, I'm not gonna give you a full demonstration of it. Uh, but what we have got is two tanks. So the top tank, which is from the, the bowl and up, is for flushing purposes. That contains fresh water that you can put a pink additive into uh, it helps keeps the bowl clean and keeps the, the water that's circulating around there smelling nice. The bottom tank is all down below the bowl and is accessible from the outside of the caravan. It's a cassette that you remove uh, and take to a waste disposal point for emptying. Uh, the time when you know it's ready for to be emptied is that there is a red warning light that appears in that little uh, box area there. It's uh, trying to depict that that's the cassette and obviously... Uh, that's where, if it illuminates, you need to go and empty it. So, for flushing purposes, you press the blue button. And if I press that down, you can see some water being dispersed around the bowl. When you've got a sufficient flush in there, then you come to the lever on the front edge of the, of the uh, toilet edge itself, and you're pushing it rearwards to drop the water and ablutions into the uh, holding tank below. 
seal it back up again because you don't want those smells coming back into the vehicle. So seal it back up again, ready for use for the next person. And again, when it's ready to use, flush it, dispense with the waste, pull the blade across, ready for use for the next person. Please use dissolvable toilet tissues. Please don't use a uh, domestic quality tissue. It uh, doesn't break down at the same uh, speed as uh, dissolvable toilet tissue. And uh, if it blocks the mechanisms on the bottom holding tank, uh, it, uh, it needs an engineer probably to remove it because you don't want to put your hands down the track as we don't want to do it either. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a job that we will do, but you'll be charged for it. So uh, just be aware that, uh, you know, don't use domestic quality tissue. I like Andrex, I love Andrex in cases. <laughs> However, it's not a pleasant job. It's not, it's not a job that I would recommend everybody to do, and the engineers normally complain and ask me to do it. So I'm not doing it either. Okay, so let's get running water through onto the vanity basin. That is the hot position on the tap where we are right now, and that is the cold position. So the cold position is always at the right angle. There's a little blue indicator there. Uh, and we might, we leave it in the hot. coming through warm but it's not got absolutely hot yet uh, it's not enough for me to shower under so you'd be pleased I'm not going to demonstrate that but, <laughs> but it is warm I know it is oh, it's getting, getting there it's getting warmer yeah, yeah. Warm. okay so just to show that it is getting warm okay shall we go here the pump is still running but it's building pressure up so what we have got here is a pressurized water system uh, on our system uh, this vehicle also has an onboard water tank should we wish to use it and I will explain how we fill that in a moment but let's come to the shower. Okay. Uh, the shower system is uh, straightforward. A couple of little features in here. Uh, there's a couple of holes here, as you can see, just on time. It's dribbling a little bit of water out of it. Uh, they, it's dropping water out of the shower head, excess water, so that when you turn the mixer tap off, yeah, water will just drain out of that point there. Be aware of it, it's meant to do it. Uh, is to prevent frost damage of that of that head itself, so to prevent any damage occurring to it. So, always have the shower head pointing away from you when you ask it to get onto the hot water. Because this is a preheated system, I can assure you this is going to be very hot water that comes out of the shower head. So much so, you do need to use it as a mixer to be able to achieve the desired temperature. Once you've found something that's suitable, by all means then put it into the rise and fall rail, raise it up, and lock it off when I can get it to turn, but I'm not gonna be able to get it to turn. It's just rotation of that right now, but my gloves are gonna start to get slippy and wet. So I can't do that right now for you. <laughs> so obviously you don't want the door open. Release the, the catch, the turnbuckle catch, and bring the shower door round. Uh, just be aware though that if you are blathering yourself up, that your elbow could catch just the leading edge and not that door open. Uh, this sounds rude and I don't wish it to sound rude. Uh, what I do when I've got one of these round shower cubicles, uh, I have had it on a couple of caravans now, to actually get that to retain in place, is not to get my partner to hold the door in that <laughs> position, but if you actually get a tapered eraser, I'm gonna use an eraser, a rubber eraser, okay. and if you just jam it into the door edge down there when you're in the shower cubicle, it sounds a cheat, but it stops that door from sliding back. If you do catch the leading edge, it just stops it from actually moving. When you're ready to remove the eraser, just pull it out of the way and the door operates naturally. Uh, some could argue, why doesn't the manufacturer do something like that? Well, they don't obviously use erasers. Uh, it's just me. That's my solution for what I know can be a little bit of an issue if you just catch the leading edge with your elbow or something like that. Immediately behind me, we've got a towel radiator. And these radiators, which are located all around the perimeter of the caravan, does have bleed valves on them. Uh, this is the bleed valve in this particular case, and there's a special tool which fits into that union, allowing you to bleed the air out in the system. Do be aware, it's like any domestic uh, radiator system, central heating system, it will generate a little bit of an air pocket, and periodically it needs to be, uh, needs to be uh, bled. So this is the highest point on the caravan, apart from the reservoir. The reservoir is the highest point, but this is the second highest point within the caravan. That will mainly gather all the air in this system. But there are other bleed points on the radiators. Please familiarize yourself where your radiators are. One is underneath your bed area here, for instance. You're gonna find them underneath the front seats. 
and you probably will find another radiator. I know there's a radiator underneath here somewhere. So there are going to be bleed valves on those. Make yourself familiar with them. Please read the owner's handbook. It will explain how those operate. So the lights in this area are all operated. Says he's, he's trying to find it. <laughs> Off a light switch probably. On the outside edge. Yep. Any light switch here? Here. Here? Oh, brilliant. Nope. Yeah, yep. that's it. My colleague found the light switch. Just here. It's up by the side of the kitchen area. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's how the lights in the toilet compartment work. You can also turn the lights on when you're in the bedroom to be able to actually uh, light the uh, toilet compartment up again, should you wish to do it that way. There is a light switch which turns it on this way. Just want to demonstrate the door catch. A bit, bit different. If you can probably see it, there is no latch there at the moment. Mm -hmm. But as I actually close that too, you might be able to see that the latch is now popped out mm -hmm. that latch is magnetic uh -huh. right so at the moment it's recessed back it's locked in place simple thing but mm -hmm. it's not broken people have brought it back thinking it's broken it's not it's magnetic so as it pulls to gets to that point there it's magnetically drawn out okay okie okay, so ba -ba -bum. Nothing too much to show you apart from a standard roof vent. It's a smaller version of the one that we've seen in the lounge area at the front. It has exactly the same operations apart from we've got another little couple of tags here, uh, which I need to show you. So basically these tags lift up. There's one on each, on, on each track. It lifts up into that position, allows the arm to now come into that point there and you lock it in place by lowering it back down again. That stops the arm from coming out of the track because it's about six inches down, if it was in strong windy conditions, it can cause the vent to lift up and drop down if you haven't got it in that position. So if it's there, wind could catch it and drop it back down again. Okay. So the idea is lift the latch up, lift the latch up on the other on the other track, put it into that position and then drop it back down, drop it back down. That is locked, it can't lift out. So when I'm ready to close it back down, lift the two latches up, move it down the track and it doesn't do it on that one it's a lot lower position you've only got about an inch of uh, air gap showing at the top edge or completely sealed which is as it is there and again fly screen and night blind they're not scrum loaded they're just pleated uh, items okay so one okay so welcome to the bedroom area uh first off we do have a travel catch that's on the uh sliding door so for transit purposes, that latch needs to be across like so. Uh, obviously for day use, it is just a case of sliding the door across and it's a magnet which holds it in place. So the magnet here comes against the latch over on this side and just retains the door in a closed position. Uh, on this one, there is nothing else to retain it back. It is just that turnbuckle catch. So there is nothing else that holds that sliding door back apart from that. So coming around into the lightings that we have in here, uh, there's various bits and pieces, so background light, full light, turn it to where we want, and off. Same applies onto the one on the other side, exactly the same. Okay, but I am going to point out, and I don't know if you can actually highlight this, you're going to find some USBs. Yep. So, there's a USB available on that spotlight, and there's a USB available on that spotlight. So that's another feature that coachmen put on their vehicles. Handy. Uh, the overhead lights that you see now illuminated are operated off the wall switches just on this side. But I'm going to come to the middle switch first because that operates the bathroom, the toilet compartment. All right, so that's, uh, as I say, there is a position in here as you're going through that you can turn on the lights within the toilet compartment. So the ones on the top edge are going to do all the lights apart from permit lights here behind the vanity mirror. Uh, and we've got an illumination behind here. This is the second position for a TV. We have got a mains point over here. We have got a 12 volt cigarette socket and we've also got a coaxial point. We've also got a TV bracket mounting plate. So this is a second position for a TV or two separate TVs. Um, obviously, if this is a fixed bed, you probably do want to watch TV first thing in the morning, last thing at night. Uh, so that bottom switch there is for panel illumination behind here. This switch here is going to be for panel illumination behind that mirror. Uh, and that's the lighting circuit. There is one more, uh, which is the one at the bottom of the bed. 
Now, at the bottom of the bed, I'm hoping the switches yeah. are still in the same place. Yeah. Lottie's just demonstrated <laughs> one on that side, and I'm going to do the one this side. Brilliant. So it's double switched. You can either operate it on the other side, which is now turned it off, or I could turn it back on on this side. It doesn't matter which way you do it, it's either on or off from either side of the bed. Uh, when you are making a double bed, you just slide that bed fully out the frame, you bring the mattress down, you drop it down so it's going into that position there, and you slide it back, and there's your double bed. Shan't do any more demonstration of the bed other than that it's fully out, and I have got support of the bed frame because I pulled the bed frame right out. And I want to retract it. Just bring your mattress into that position there. Push the frame right back. Not very well demonstrated because I've just bought the mattress. Push the frame right back, which I've done now. The plastics, unfortunately, is holding the mattress in. It'd be a lot easier without that plastic on it. So, underneath the bed, I can gain access underneath the bed. Uh, and at the moment, I can't fully lift it because the mattress is also holding it in place. So, well, I want to just move in here and just show you. There's a couple of things on the water. I don't, hopefully you can see there's two items right at the top edge. Uh, you've got a, a white valve and then a silver valve. The white valve has got a little daisy wheel on the top. And it allows you to adjust the pressure as the battery starts to deplete with energy. Uh, if you haven't got a main supply, you can actually, that's it, lovely. On the top right hand side uh, is a little daisy wheel, you can adjust that. If you screw it out, it needs less pressure to turn it off. If you screw it in, it requires greater pressure to turn the switch off. The other one is a solenoid valve and it's feeding, as you can see, this blue section here. That is an underfloor tank, a freshwater tank underneath the, the, underneath the bed area. Uh, Coachman always su supply them there. And for drainage points, I personally don't like onboard tanks. It's just a personal thing. Uh, I find them very difficult to fill and very difficult to empty. But to empty on this one is just a case of pull that plug. Uh, and any water that was in that tank is now shooting out underneath the floor of the caravan on the underside of the caravan. It's not actually damaging anything internally. When I want to seal it off again, just push that plug all the way down. Find the right location hole. That's a bit Bear with me a second. I think I'm in the right area. I've got to look, see where it is. It's straight below me. Right. I can't find it. <laughs> well, believe me, it does go in. Uh, I just can't. Hey, it is. Got it. Just that needs to get it to go into the right location. It's now gone into the right location. How poor am I to demonstrate it for you? <laughs> well, Demonstration. Quite a tight course. space. Okay, so that's everything that uh, I can show you on this particular caravan at this moment of time. There are other features on it. Uh, you, it will be covered in the owner's handbook, but this is the basic workings on how this vehicle works, the Coachman Laser 860 XL 2020 or 2020. Many thanks indeed for your time.